Hi, Hill City. Welcome to our online discussion today. If you don't know, we have an interesting schedule where we meet corporately the second and fourth weeks of the month, and then we meet in house churches on the first and third weekends of the month. And so as we ramp up for August, we actually have a first weekend discussion for you. And since we met for our fun park day last week, uh, we're not discussing a sermon series. We thought it'd actually be interesting to uh, touch base with John because he has been doing a counseling program and he's actually just wrapping that up and is soon to be a, a licensed clinician, which is really exciting. <laughs> Maybe a bit nerve wracking. <laughs> but it's a really cool gift yeah. to um, just have had him in this program and bring so much of that knowledge and wisdom into the church and obviously into other people's lives. And so we just thought we'd talk a little bit today about counseling, how it relates to Christianity. Uh, some of you might be thinking, oh, I'm not sure I think it's great for Christians to go to therapy. So maybe we'll start there. Why do you think some people might be uh, fearful or against getting into therapy? I would say right off that we live in a culture where um, it's okay, that it's not only okay, but almost pressed that you're unknown. Mm -hmm. we, we come with this, like we want to be this boss or whatever. There's these, all these memes of yeah. how life should be. But honestly, we just looking into the Bible, we were meant to be known yeah. and, and to be heard. And in, in doing so, we are set free to be ourselves instead of trying to fit into a mold and set free to be ourselves in the presence of others and especially in the presence of God. Um, I, and that just thinking about that, I think um, a lot of the uh, therapy work that I do, uh, some of the first things I try to do, especially if they grew up in a Christian home, is to let them know it's okay to have your emotions, that God gave us emotions. Emotions aren't bad things. They're just information about what you're going through, what you've been through, and it's information to know what's going on inside of you. So, because I remember growing up in a youth group, uh, and maybe this is too old school, uh, <laughs> but like they would say things like, don't listen to your emotions, listen to God, mm. right? And, and what, yeah. and I understand what they were trying to say, like, Hey, you're all activated or dysregulated. And so I want you to like trust God's virtues and values, mm -hmm. but uh, to say not to listen to a part of who you are, like the way God has made our, our neurological system and, and how God has made, uh, like just how our bodies, right. Uh, and to not be aware of that and put that aside is I, I find that to be very incorrect because uh, do we not worship with our emotions? Do we not love with, without our, can we even love without our emotions? Mm -hmm. Can we care for one another? Can we be in the moment in the presence of God and him smiling at us without our emotions? And if, and if that is the case, are we, missing out on so much of the uh, of the life experience relationship connection and depth that god had a desires for us and made us for and so a lot of times i find that coming up in marriages mm -hmm. uh, in marriages i find that um, husbands and wives can be very disconnected due to one of them or both of them feeling guilt for having emotions or it's saying to me Oh, I don't have emotions. She, she's just really emotional or he's, he's just really emotional. Yeah. And, uh, and what does that even mean? You mean, you, are you telling me? So a lot of things saying, I, I'll say like something like this, and maybe this might catch you off guard, but it, was it okay to have emotions in your home? And, uh, did your parents ever show, uh, their emotions? And if, did they ever fight in front of you? No, we don't fight in front of our kids. Like, then, then do you know how to deal with conflict? Yeah. Do you know how to deal with heightened uh, moments? And for a lot of people, they would say, I don't. Hmm. So now what do you do when you're put in a situation 
where the model that we've been given was to pretend like nothing was wrong, then that's literally what is perpetuated. And so there's a lot of uh, deconstruction of uh, the idea of uh, Christianity and emotions. Jesus was full of emotion. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine him, uh, like I imagine kids running at him and like, I just read that again in the book of Mark and how the kids, he would hold these kids in his hands and in his arms and bless them. Can you imagine him, him being like a robot? He's like, you are blessed. I mean, that's kind of how the old movies have it, right? Just a very like Freya looking Jesus putting his hands yes. on, on You are heads. my lambs. I will bless you. Like, yeah. and, and if we have that sort of a, a vision of how God is, how are we supposed to come to him mm -hmm. how do we come to him boldly to the throne of god so that's a i mean there are so many things in in there but maybe to summarize some of the big reasons could be fear yeah it could be uh maybe fear of being vulnerable fear of a different seeing the world and yourself especially your emotions through a different lens and maybe even the fear of being wrong or getting into something that could be wrong according to what your understanding of a biblical worldview is. Yeah. Because you're afraid, oh, if I'm focusing so much on myself, I've heard this too, you know, then I w I'm being selfish. I'm not being self-sacrificing or whatever. Yeah. When in fact, we all have to, in order to have a healthy relationship with others and with God, know ourselves, which all... All those things can be helped. So what is one big idea or structure from all of the learning you've done that's really helped you to understand people in a different way? Yeah, I think one of the first things that I can think of is the understanding attachment or mm -hmm. attachment si science or attachment styles. Uh, that, is, that came through um, a man named uh, John... Uh, I always mess up his name, about ba 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 Bobley okay. and, and Mary Ainsworth. And they really worked on whatever is, I call it software. Whatever software you were given by your parents, it continues to play out through the rest of your lives. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that if you were uh, a child and you, or you grew up in a home and uh, your house was unsafe, so you have to self-soothe, so you would cry or at, like reach out to your parent, but they were unavailable for you, then you as a child need to survive. So you tell yourself, I need to protect myself. Mm -hmm. I need to take care of myself. I cannot trust my parents or others for my needs. And so for the rest of your life, most of the time, I see this play out, that they are avoidant of really going deep with others due to that first kind of distance from their parents. Yeah. And, and then what happens is they don't see their world as safe. Yeah. So they live life feeling unloved, feeling distant, and not seeing the world as safe. And those are many of us, me included, mm -hmm. uh, the people that are like really standoffish and don't want to ever be vulnerable because being vulnerable is like a safety issue. Like yeah. it's a survival issue. And then there's the other side where an, another insecure attachment would be called uh, uh, an anxious attachment, mm -hmm. which is when you sometimes get love and you don't get love and then you are sitting back and you don't know if you should go forward or pull back. It creates this like unknown space where the child and then in future adults, right, feel anxious. So all the time they live so in a, clingy. yeah, they live in a world of anxiety. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like you, a situation happens and then you sit by yourself and you're like, um, I don't know what to do. Should I pursue? No. Should I pull back? Oh, I should have done this right. I should have thought of this. Mm -hmm. You know, all, I, all these things start to just perpetuate due to the anxiety that grows. And so a lot of your interactions in the future, if your anxious uh, attachment is like, is this pu push and pull? And a lot of times you end up, 
uh, uh, you end up with an avoidant attachment person. So you are like, uh, I don't know. So I'm going to chase a little bit and they're running. And so uh, if, if you're in a relationship or in a friendship and one's anxious and one's avoiding there, it's always unsteady yeah. because what they don't know is there's something that has been encoded within us and on how we see life. And, and until we address that, because I believe you can still secure your attachment. I mean, God has done some miracles in my own life, uh, but it takes the work to put in it, but that you can be secure in your relationship. You can be secure with others. You can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You can like uh, allow anxiety to drop down or depression and uh, avoidance and distance to drop down so that you can be yourself and be accepted yeah and that and so i find that to be one of the i would say most important ways that i see people and i see ourselves and i was reading this book here which kind of rocked my world it's called renovated by jim wilder he's up in evergreen uh, one day i'll get a hold of him <laughs> uh, but he spoke about how um he mixed attachment signs for salvation that um Salvation is our attachment with God. Mm -hmm. And as that secures, everything else in our lives begins to be put in place. And we don't live in a place of anxiety or avoidance, but that we can be secure in God. And, um, and new uh, research has come out uh, that Sue Johnson, which is uh, um, another book that I would recommend for married couples, but she has done a lot of research on adult attachment that you can really work, that adults also need attachment. That yeah. we are looking for someone who's looking for us. Mm -hmm. That all of us, we are looking for a, a person or two that we can find security in. No matter, this is, it doesn't need to be marital relationships. It's like, as an adult, we need security from people who love us and that we love. And when we don't have that, it causes more insecurity. Yep. But she's saying, and she's, uh, she and Jim Wilder are saying that we can still find that attachment in God and you can be secure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I would say attachment is probably the biggest thing that I, um, lens I look through. Um, other, yeah. yeah. I think it's really interesting looking through attachment in, and your relationships and friendships, but Maybe some people are like, okay, I can kind of understand that or see those things in myself. But how would that practically, if you're going to say this person on the other side of the screen is hearing for the first time they should go to therapy. Maybe they heard a couple things you said about anxious or avoidant attachment and they're thinking, oh, okay, that one's me or maybe me. And then what is the practical application of working that out or what would they see become healthier in their lives practically yeah. if they pursued that? I would say the biggest thing is that when we, when we live our lives, not the way that God intended mm -hmm. and, and no fault to yourself. Some of us have gone through some things. It is not your fault. <laughs> it is not your fault. But at some point, you still have to deal with it. Yeah. You can't say, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I'm not going to deal with it. At some point, we have to take ownership of our own lives uh, as God has given us power to do so. Because yeah. when we were a kid, we could not change outcomes. We, could, we did not have uh, the authority nor power to do it. But as we have developed, we cannot continue to do what we've been doing because we will continue to wound as we have been wounded. Yeah. Even if you don't want to. Oh, I've never, I'm never going to do what my parents did. And then we exactly do what we, our parents have done yeah. because that's the encoding within us. Right. And so I love uh, in the old Testament, it says uh, the sin will go for the third and fourth generation. I'm just like, ah, oh, no, but you see it happening and, and, and it's, and it's a spiritual matter, but it, God understands us. Like yeah. the Bible makes sense in attachment science, but like, but the blessing, right? We will go into the thousands of generations. Right. And so like, well, let's, let's move into the blessing. 
instead of just uh, sitting where we are at. So practically, I think one of the biggest things is, is in our relationship with God, when we don't deal with the woundedness and how we came up, and when we have these areas of our life that we've shut the door on, we will remain stuck. Mm-hmm. There is a there are a lot of people, including myself, that was that we were I was so stuck. I wanted to move forward, but I could not address the pain in my life because I did not want to open that door because I thought if I open that door, I would be ruined. Mm-hmm. But what I have found out, ooh, I can cry, is that actually with Christ, we can be set absolutely free and you can be who you, who God says you are and who you never thought you could be because Jesus changes everything. The gospel is good news. <coughs> Salvation is true. And it doesn't just change this eternal ticket. It is an, it is a heavenly moment that is a seed, like a mustard seed is like, and I'm, I'm imagining Jesus is saying like, it's a, it's like a mustard seed, the kingdom of God. You, when you look at it, you're like, no way yeah. could this change anything in my life, but it plays out with radical implications that changes not only my life, but changes generations of lives. And we can choose to be wounded healers or we could choose to be wounded wounders. Yeah. But, but that is our choice, depending on where we want to go practically with what God is calling us to do. And, and, and it is for freedom he set us free. Not so that we sit back and saying, I can't, that's, that's not possible for me. Uh, you know what? I, I'm not saying full healing is even, you, you might not even get there because it takes a long amount of work, but it's available to be healed. And once you're healed, your eyes are open and you become a healer, mm-hmm. which is just wild because it's like, oh, it's good news. That's redemption. That God is flipping the script. He's changing all things. He's making all things new. And so I'm like, I can't believe you can do that. And I was kind of explaining this like a couple of weeks about just my own life and my own testimony. When I look back into my life, I cannot believe what God has done. Like yeah. it is It is absolutely mind-blowing what God has done in my life. And when you're in the middle, you can't see any of it. But on as you connect the dots looking back, Steve Jobs, right? As you connect the dots looking back, I'm just amazed. I'm like, I cannot believe what you can do, God, if I could keep on putting myself in your hands and saying, I want to deal with my past. I want to deal with my sin. I want to deal with my addiction. I want to deal with my brokenness. I want to deal with that distance where I find myself running. I want to deal with that anxiety where I find myself just like in uh, uh, moments of chaos. I want to be known and loved. And that reminds me back into the garden. Counselors will call it attunement. Mm -hmm. Attunement means that you, that uh, I wrote it here, that your parents knew what you were feeling and what you were going through, that their lives weren't so distracted and so in chaos that they could allow you to feel and feel loved. And so we need that attunement uh, in the Garden of Eden. And this is kind of like my theological um, understanding of even all of counseling is that we human beings were made to walk with God uh, naked and unashamed, Mm -hmm. meaning like they were fully seen and fully known that's like fully known and fully loved. That's what I meant, fully known and fully loved. And when we are fully known and fully loved, we are free. Mm-hmm. We are free, yeah. I could, I could just- So go get this. counseling. <laughs> <laughs> so like, if you feel stuck, if you feel like you, like your, your trajectory of maturity has been flatlined because you're stuck in the past or you're stuck in a church hurt or a woundedness, a relationship woundedness, or things started to rise up in your adult years because they do, I would say maybe it's time to explore those areas and I would invest in yourself and find someone who loves Jesus, I would recommend, and move forward in that. 
but thanks for joining us and thanks for listening to my rants. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you.